Hey, how's it going? It's Carl, AKA Carl Drum Tech. I'm here right now at the Kenneth Han Park in Culver City. And today I want to talk about the difference in terms of the match grip versus the traditional grip. And I'm sure this is a long standing debate over which grip is better, which grip is best for you. And uh, this can be applied to many different disciplines like marching percussion and uh, concert percussion and drum set playing. But let's just limit it to the uh, marching percussion and drumline uh, world in terms of just giving you guys some value for uh, your, this activity itself. Now, of course, traditionally speaking, when uh, there was a need to create a drum carrier system in order for you to carry drums, especially back in the military days of needing a drum to carry around and play and kind of like hype the troops into battle, uh, because of the sling, it naturally made the drums kind of have an angle, which necessitated a grip that would be able to uh, get you to be able to drum efficiently on based on that angle. So the traditional grip was created so that you can basically play, basically play at that angle. Now, fast forward to the modern era where the modern harnesses enabled you to no longer have that slant on the drum, but yet, even as the times have changed, the traditional grip has remained because, hey, guess what? That's why it's called traditional, right? So it's traditional that we use that grip even though the days of the sling drum are over for the most part, right? So uh, now, because of that, right, uh, why did we still maintain the traditional grip um, even though there are pros and cons to both? So let's talk about the cons. And let's talk about when I first started learning how to play drums. When I first started learning how to play drums, I learned from a, another student who uh, was maybe like 13 years old at the time as well and is still one of the best drummers I've ever seen in my life. He's been drumming since he was a little kid and he's just amazing. And he taught me mash grip because he's always been using mash grip his entire life as well. Now, when he got into drumline, he had to learn the traditional grip because the drumline was using, especially for the snare line, they were using a traditional grip. So he had to learn a whole new grip that he's never been exposed to before. So now, when I start, started learning from my friend, he taught me match grip. And what he was telling me about the, the, the traditional grip is that match grip is so much better. Why? Because it, in the traditional grip, you have one or two fingers that push down on the stick, and that's where you get your power. You also get it from the wrist, but that's for both grips, right? Now, with match grip, you get maybe one, two, three, or four fingers to push down on the stick. So imagine that, one or two versus three and four, you're gonna get more power on the stick that is utilizing more fingers, of course, naturally. Now, this can, can lead to a weaker left hand, not just because maybe you're right-handed and your left hand is weaker, but also uh, just because of the fact that you have more fingers that are being utilized. And uh, if you're not conscious of it, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have a weaker left hand and you have to compensate for it to make sure that you have a nice, even sound on right to left. What about the uh, practicality of the traditional grip itself in terms of high school drum lines where there's a lot of movement going on from bass drum to quads to snare to uh, front ensemble. Now, pretty much every single instrument in the percussion ensemble uses the match grip. Only in the snare line do you use a traditional grip. So when you want to go to snare line, you have to learn a whole new grip, which can cause some practicality issues, right? So, you know, those are the cons of play using the traditional grip. So what, what, what about the uh, pros about using the tra traditional grip? Well, let's think about it real quick here. Um, basically, uh, it looks different than the other, uh, it di differentiates the snare drum from all the other, other instruments. So you have the bass drums to hold the stick like this. It's still mash grip, but they hold it like this. Quad drums, you got your traditional mash grip, and then the snare drums have this kind of look as well. And then some visuals are just not possible if you are using the mash grip. Of course, you have the classic traditional like the high mom, right, with the traditional grip. I mean, you can do something like this with the mash grip, but it's just not the same. So there's so many cool things that you, know, can, can, you can do that are different with the traditional grip that you may not be able to do with the mash grip, but uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, it's like the access to the different kind of visuals 
that you can do. So it just looks different. And the fact that uh, everybody pretty much uses the traditional grip, except for the rare drum lines like the Santa Clara Vanguard in a couple of years that they've used the mash grip, or even a uh, prominent high school like Dartmouth High School, which have always traditionally used mash grip for their snare line. So, you know, I guess uh, the only pro is that it looks better and or it looks uh, different and that you have different you have an access to different kinds of visual possibilities but I guess that's pretty much it right so what did I do when I taught my high school drum line well I taught my snare line how to play traditional grip and it's kind of funny because I've always used mash grip and uh, that's when I first started learning how to play drums is you know I learned the mash grip I, a, I consider myself pretty much a quad drummer, which uses the mash grip. And I do subscribe to the fact that, yes, you do get more power to uh, with the mash grip versus the traditional grip. So why, why the heck did I choose traditional grip for my drum line? Well, probably the same reasons why everybody else, you know, chooses that grip. Because everybody else is doing it. So, you know, okay, Carl, do you want to follow the crowd and things like that? Well, I guess in this instance, yeah, I do. And, uh, you know, like I said, there are, I can go back to the pros of just, you know, the visual aspect of it and how it looks different. But, you know, there's really no substantiative pro to using the traditional grip. Um, it's definitely more practical if you had everybody using the match grip. But hey, I still chose the traditional grip just because, like I said, I want to kind of choose the superficial aspect of it and that's okay for example i can choose a flashy car over a more practical car like you know a luxury car that guzzles more gas versus a practical car that's less expensive and doesn't take as much gas you know i just want to choose the flashy car because i want to be superficial i want to have the flashy car you can call me douchey you can judge me or whatever the case may be but that is the car that i choose to drive so just like with anything else you know if you choose one option over the other to be true to yourself be true to the identity of your group and uh, pretty much uh, you nobody else can really decide what you want to do with your drum line and if you want to uh, follow the crowd do that if you want to like stick out a little bit and do your own thing do that but whatever it is do it to the best of your ability so what's the verdict here which one is better I don't know I'll say it's match grip <laughs> all right thanks for watching and uh, as always if you guys like this video please like comment share and if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe and until next time take care okay I'm back so let's give a little lesson because I get asked this question a lot how do you stay in step if you are having trouble staying in step uh, in your drum line uh, where you're in your marching drum line where you like you know sometimes you get off step and it's like how do you fix that how do you stop yourself from getting off step so this is my number one secret to making sure that you never get off step ever again in your life this is my number one top secret for doing this so make sure you pay attention okay so here's the thing all right so you take the beat right you have one two three four let's just start with that right so obviously when you mark time you mark time with uh, left foot first so one two three four okay so the left the left foot goes down on one and and three your right foot goes down and on two and four so one two three four that's all you need to know pretty much right but sometimes it's easier said than done when you're playing some stuff with it okay so now here's the secret okay when you first learn how to mark time and play at the same time no matter what your style is all right so you know in, what no matter what your marching style is you know some schools like to have the toe down and then the, the heels go up that's fine okay but when you're first learning learn how to pick up your entire foot flat up and then flat down so make sure that there's no none of this with your feet none of this just make sure that the entire foot comes down so that it's very clear when the foot hits the ground on the beat that's crucial okay listen to that again make sure that you understand exactly when the feet hit the ground and it needs to be exactly on the beat that is a very crucial point okay so you don't want it now the next step is when you play something right let's just play let's say you're playing um, eighth notes okay eight on a hand a very classic exercise one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so you see how there's numbers in there right one and two and three and four and that is when okay your feet hit the ground like I said left foot on one and three right foot on two and four okay so now when you're playing this one and two and three and four and your feet need to hit 
at exactly the right time as those numbers. Just like your hands need to hit the drum at exactly the same time as one and two and three and four and your feet need to hit the ground at the same time. Let's simplify it even more. Let's say you need to play some quarter notes on the right hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, your feet go down also in the numbers. One, two, three, four. So your hands and feet need to be absolutely together at the same time. It cannot be like this, where it's like, or like this. It needs, it needs to be exactly at the same time. Okay, if that's not happening, you're gonna be at risk of getting off step. So work it to the point where you're absolutely perfect from hands to feet. And if it's not perfect, you need to keep working on it again and again and again. And if you're not used to doing something like that, it's gonna take a lot of time. And you can't just be like, all right, well, that's okay. No, it is not okay. Like I said, the more you let things like that slide, then the more uh, you increase your chance of getting off step. So make sure that you are exactly, you make sure your hands and feet hit the uh, beat and the numbers at exactly the same time and that is how you're going to ensure that you never get off step again.